Guys, I just made a video about a, a charging company in the United States who are financially backed by Google. Google has invested a billion dollars into this charging company. They are building these street chargers, which will be basically on power poles in the street. You'll be able to charge when you're just parked in the street. Now, that's what they want to do. They're rolling them out. They've got investment from Google. So, I mean, basically they're saying, we are going to be bigger than Tesla. We're going to build more chargers in America than Tesla. And while well, they clearly have the financial backing to do so. So this sort of thing is happening in America, but it's also happening here in Australia. Maybe not to such a massive degree. Yes, we don't have anywhere near the number of fast chargers that you guys have in America. If we did, there'd be more fast chargers than human beings, not really, but you know, there'd be a lot. But another 149 pole mounted EV chargers are being installed in one city here in Australia. And this is just one of many different projects happening like this all over the world. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. EV haters, they often say this, EVs can never work. They can never ever become mainstream because charging. I mean, there's not enough charges. Most people live in apartments. Most people in cities live in apartments. You now, is it true that the majority of the world's population live in apartments? No, that's not actually true. But anyway, there is a lot of people that live in apartments. That's very, very true, clearly, obviously. But there are solutions, right? A lot of apartment blocks are building EV charges. And there are more and more of these kinds of charging poles are being built as well. Sydney-based Plus ES says it's going to install 150 new pole-mounted EV charging units across the city in Sydney as part of the first round of grants in the New South Wales government's curbside charging grant program. Guys, I've made, I think, about 10, maybe more videos over the past couple of years showing these projects. In Germany, they've got these as well, but they've got different ones. They've got ones that actually go on in the gutter. They've even got them in the gutter. They've got them in all, all kinds of different locations, but basically what they've got is some form of having a charger on the sidewalk. And usually, quite often, you don't even know it's there. That's the really cool thing about these chargers. Imagine having like thousands of gas pumps up and down every street, right? But you don't know they're there, and they are very, very cheap to run. That's the thing. Energy is predicted to hit a marginal cost. Now, Tony Siever has been talking about this. Peter Diamandis has been talking about this. Lots of different experts have been talking about energy hitting marginal costs by 2030, 2035. When renewable energy becomes the um, primary form of energy across, you know, basically your city or your country, the cost of energy comes down. And here in Australia, the cost of energy in renewable energy states that are predominantly states where they use renewable energy, the cost of energy has not gone up. But in places like Queensland, the cost of electricity has risen. And that's where they primarily still use fossil fuels or coal power. So in other words, it would be very, very cheap to charge your EV. It'd be very convenient because you can basically do it where you park it. Um, you can you know, go to bed, wake up, and your vehicle will be charged. And it's gonna become more and more common as, well, more and more people buy electric cars. So a lot of people say, oh, there's not enough charges, so I'm not gonna buy an EV. But realistically, to create that change, to get governments to build out these charges, to actually invest in it, there needs to be more electric cars on the road. The New South Wales state government announced a few days ago that the recipients of the first round of EV curbside charging grants, part of a $4 million investment to install 671 EV charging ports across 391 sites in the state. The Driven has reported on this story, so thanks guys at The Driven for your awesome reporting on everything EVs. The government investment is intended to drive a further $8 million in private investment and provide vital EV charging to drivers who do not have access to their own off-site parking and charging, such as those in apartments and busy metro suburbs. The other point here, guys, is that, um, well, you can still charge your EV at a DC fast charger. You know, generally you can get from about 20 to 80% charge, probably around 30 to 40 minutes. So that's definitely an option as well. And considering the fact that most people only drive about probably 30 to 40 kilometers a day on average, then it means that you don't have to do that really once a week. Amongst the winners of the charging grants here in New South Wales was Plus ES, a provider of end-to-end -end metering services and infrastructure solutions for both large and small markets. So if you're wondering, if you're in Sydney, you're wondering whereabouts these pole-mounted DV charging ports are gonna be, they're gonna be in Sydney's inner west and suburbs, including Waverley, Randwick, Wallara, and Lane Cove. 
And here's what they said. We believe pole mounted chargers are the most safe, efficient and cost effective way to bring charging to the curb. Utilizing existing assets significantly reduces costs, but also minimizes public inconvenience as there's no need to escape the footpath or the road. This makes the EV charging infrastructure installation process quick and seamless and reduces visual impacts on already busy urban streetscapes. You know, one of the things that EV haters, they like to say is also this, when we're all plugged into the grid, when everyone's driving an EV, our electricity use will skyrocket. Well, here's the thing, actually, not really technically true. In some places, for example, in France, where there's more EVs, they're saying their power use hasn't actually increased. Um, one of the big benefits to EVs, of course, is the fact that you can obviously send energy from your battery back into the grid. Now, truthfully, in places, many cities now, they're having to turn solar panels off because they're generating too much energy. And during the day, there's nowhere for that energy to go. We can't store all that solar energy. Now, this is one way we can store it. Basically, when there's all that excess power in the middle of the day and that energy is being completely wasted, which it is now in many countries around the world during the middle of the day, we can save that in batteries like in California. For example, in California, all that excess energy from all the solar panels there is being stored in batteries and then discharged in the evening peak between 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So rather than being wasted, you can charge your EV during the day and then discharge that energy potentially to your home, being part of a virtual power plant, uh, making you money potentially as well. And then it means that essentially, not only are you using clean energy um, from the sun, but you're also providing the solution to the grid. So the solution to the grid is having that power in the peak period between 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Almost all cities around the world, that's when their peak is and that's where the problems are. That's where we need big batteries. But potentially we can avoid even having big batteries if we, well, most people actually use the grid and actually sign up to virtual power plants, meaning sending that energy back into the grid between 6 to 9 p.m. and then taking it out during the middle of the day when there is too much energy. So actually, rather than EVs being a problem, they're the solution to the grid's problems. Thanks for watching.